Hey everyone, so I've got another mechanism challenge for you. We have our starting material, we have our product, we have our reaction conditions. We need the mechanism. You need to uh, write out all the intermediates and all of the electron pushing arrows. So uh, this one's a little bit trickier than some of the other ones we've done, but I think you can do it, so give it a shot. Okay, so we've got three sets of reaction conditions, or three three uh, reagents that we're throwing at this substrate. Um, and so, what are we going to do? Well, we uh, so number one, we've got this uh, this this uh, compound here. This is ionic, right? So we've got a plus charge there, and we've got a minus charge there. So uh, this negative charge is going to go grab something. We're going to go grab a proton. So where is the most acidic proton? Well, that's actually going to be this uh, implied hydrogen right there. Right There is also an implied hydrogen there, but uh, these bromines withdraw some of the electron density from that carbon, making it more acidic. So let's have nitrogen go grab that, and we're going to go and uh, kick that up here. So let's draw the result. We've got that, and we've got that, and we've got that. And then, uh, because nitrogen has been neutralized, right, uh, the, the lithium can no longer complex with that. So lithium is going to coordinate to the oxygen instead. So we've got OLI, right, the oxy anion, Li plus, they're going to uh, interact. So there we are there. Um, so that's reaction one. Now let's move on to number two. We've got N-butyl lithium. So what is N-butyl lithium? We did learn about these organolithium reagents over in the organic chemistry playlist. So or uh, N-butyl, right, straight chain butyl. And now what's interesting here is that we can almost treat this uh, as an ionic compound. It's not. It's, it, it has a lot of covalent character, but that, that carbon-lithium interaction uh, ha has a lot of ionic character as well. So we can uh, treat this almost like a carb anion. And so what is this going to do? This is a little bit, uh, if you haven't seen this, it may look a little strange, but this is going to be something called lithium halogen exchange. So the, uh, the, uh, the carb anion is going to go and attack the halogen and just leave those electrons right there. That's what it's going to do. Um, it's a, it has to do with the polarizability of that carbon-bromine bond and uh, just the sheer reactivity of this, uh, this carb anion. Right? This is an extremely reactive uh, uh, compound. So we are going to do our lithium halogen exchange. Uh, let's get this thing on there. And so we are left with, uh, here's the other uh, bromine, and we've got that negative charge there. Now, uh, it does not like this negative charge, and so it's going to try to do something to get rid of it. And so what ends up happening here, now again, this is the second thing that's going to be a little bit strange, uh, if you haven't seen this before, but we've uh, the way that this is able to neutralize that negative charge is by this bromo group just leaving. So we are going to, now let's jump down here. So what does that leave? That leaves us with something quite interesting. Uh, that is going to leave us with a carbene. So this is a carbene. Now we did talk about, we did two tutorials on carbenes over in the OCHEM playlist. So if you haven't seen those and you've never seen a carbene before, this is going to look bizarre. But uh, So I highly recommend uh, going over there and checking out those tutorials if this is new to you because uh, there is a lot to talk about with, car with carbenes. But uh, in short, um, it, is a, it is a neutral carbon species, but it is an electron deficient species. This carbon does not 
possess a full octet. Uh, it, it just has these two sigma bonds and then that lone pair. Um, but it is neutral because these two electrons belong to the carbon. It is showing four electrons in this Lewis dot structure, one per covalent bond plus the two from the lone pair. So uh, it is neutral, but it is electron deficient and highly reactive. Carbenes are highly reactive species, and what they like to do is they like to rearrange, and they rearrange in some very interesting ways. So what this one is going to do is this lone pair, right, it wants to go coordinate to something, but it, it needs to regain an octet somehow. So it is going to uh, go right there and form that triple bond, and then this carbon is actually going to go and coordinate to that one. So that may look a little weird, but that is what is going on here. So we are going to, uh, uh, yeah, so now what happens, yeah, we've got that. So it's starting to look more like the product. And so this is a bit odd, but um, right, this, uh, uh, right, this, carbon is now over here and this carbon is now over here we made that triple bond right we made that other the, this lone pair is now that additional pi bond to get the alkyne um, but it rearranged it sort of swapped which carbon was connected to which because this carbon is now uh, is this carbon is now attached to the purple one and then the green is over here with OLI. So um, that's, uh, we made a carbene and then the carbene rearranged. So again, check out those tutorials if you, if you, if you're, uh, if this all seems insane, um, but uh, carbenes are very interesting. So now number three, uh, we've got this TIPS OTF. So uh, as you get a little further in organic chemistry, if you haven't seen this, you, you gotta just start memorizing these, these acronyms. Um, so triisopropyl silyl, O triple. So uh, what is that? Uh, so triisopropyl silyl. Silyl is silicon. So we've got silicon. Triisopropyl is uh, that speaks for itself. Three isopropyl groups. So triisopropyl silyl O triple. Uh, so triple is uh, sulfur. Is this a sulfonyl stuff? So sulfur, two oxygens, and then that's actually CF3. So, uh, and uh, so uh, again, uh, TIPS, TIPS is this part here, triisopropyl silyl, and then this O is this O right there, that oxygen atom, and then this is a triple group, uh, TF is a triple group. So these are just some, some, uh, some groups that you, that you got to, start to memorize at some point. So what is going to happen here? We've got, um, we've got, oh, it's essentially O minus, right? This, uh, it, it still is an oxy anion. It's coordinated to lithium, but it, it's still an oxy anion and therefore it's quite reactive. And what this is going to do is it is going to attack silicon and kick off O triple. So silicon is very receptive to being attacked attacked by something like an oxy anion. And then this uh, group is, is very happy to go because this oxy anion is going to be, that negative charge is going to be delocalized. We've got these two other uh, oxygens that are going to share the uh, negative charge there. So what did we do? We put the tips on the O. So that's why there's O tips right now. And that's basically just a protected uh, oxygen atom. So uh, presumably, maybe we're not done here. This may have been the beginning of a grander synthesis, and now uh, perhaps we're going to work with this alkene over here or something like that. But um, we we did want to protect that oxygen. So this was a little tricky. Let's just re review again really quickly what we did. Um, we know that this nitrogen atom is very reactive. It's very, very, very basic. It's going to grab a proton. And we decided that this was the most acidic proton because of the effect of having these bromines uh, right here withdrawing electron density from that carbon. Uh, so we got that one and then uh, made the alkene, or where we put the pi bond there, kicked that up, um, kicked this pi bond up onto the oxygen to coordinate to lithium. Then we reacted with n-butyl lithium, and the n-butyl lithium did the lithium halogen exchange. So this attacked the bromine, 
and then we left the uh, anion right there on that carbon. Then this was the tr probably the tricky part if you haven't seen carbenes yet, but this, bromo this bromide uh, left, right? It left the bromine atom with the electrons in that sigma bond, because, uh, and it did that in order to neutralize this negative charge, right? Because uh, if, it, if this carbon loses that uh, electron, it's contributing to that bond, it will neutralize. And so we got our carbene, and then the carbene did this interesting rearrangement where the lone pair formed the triple bond, made that additional pi bond, and then this rearranged here, this carbon ended up uh, uh, coordinated to that uh, purple carbon there. So that's how we got our alkyne with OLI, and then we reacted with TIPS O triffle, and we, uh, the oxy anion attacked silicon, kicked off O triffle, and we put the TIPS on the oxygen. So that got us to our product. So that's a nice little three-step uh, mechanism and uh, that's it. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.